good day, everyone. Uh, I'm Peter Sabol Sharp Eye, uh, Sony Europe uh, Imaging Ambassador, and uh, today I will present my macro photos and bring you closer to my methodology and introduce you um, to the main problems that we uh, encounter in macro photography. But uh, I will also show the solutions for them. Uh, as you know, a uh, branch uh, of photography macro is uh, quite demanding uh, to perform than, for example, portrait or landscape photography, because it's uh, quite uh, technically conditioned and uh, it requires uh, great precision and attention to detail in order for the final result to be satisfactory. So uh, what exactly is macro photography? Uh, it comes uh, from Greek word macro, which uh, means uh, big. Uh, with macro photography, uh, we uh, enlarge uh, uh, small objects, and uh, we can we call a macro photography uh, that covers the range from a reproduction uh, ratio of uh, one to one, the true macro or real size, or a ten to one uh, magnification, which goes to extreme macro. Actually, so this is uh, in short uh, the size of the projected image uh, on the sensor. Um, this is the word macro goes from Greek word. And uh, we can um, break down uh, into three parts. Um, so we have uh, three terms that we most often use uh, when a certain object uh, we uh, take photograph. So it's um, uh, a close up photography. Uh, macro photography and uh, extreme macro photography. As you can see, um, the close up on the left upper screen uh, is a butterfly that, um, that uh, is um, more close up. It's not true macro because it's not um, mathematically at one to one reproduction ratio. Uh, and uh, on the right, you see a true macro one to one reproduction ratio. But uh, as you can see, this is not a, a, a good uh, frame because it's too much cropped into the, uh, into the frame. So it's much uh, better to uh, use uh, the field for composition and not to bother too much uh, with the mathematics. But for, for now, I will just try to uh, explain uh, how, um, uh, what magnification means and what we can achieve with uh, these magnifications. So on the left down, we have now three time macro. So it's three to one reproduction ratio. And on the right side, it's a five time macro. Uh, as you see, um, uh, this uh, by cl uh, close up, um, we, uh, we mean uh, that um, a photography uh, is taken with any lens that can record the main subject uh, to, to the foreground of the image uh, that is sharp and occupies most of the image uh, in technical terms. Uh, is the use of the minimal focal length of the lens that, that it can optically allow. So um, under the term macro, uh, we consider each photo is at the reproduction one to one, as you can see on the uh, right. Uh, so uh, that means that if uh, we use a full frame sensor uh, that measures approximately uh, 35 uh, uh, on the long side millimeter and 24 on the short side, and we shoot uh, uh, on object that is uh, 10 millimeter or one centimeter long, it will be projected uh, in the same size on the image sensor itself. So it will take about one third of the frame. Uh, and if we want to zoom in on some subject to fill entire frame, we will have to shoot at it uh, three to one expect ratio, which means we need to get magnification of more than one to one as a classic macro lenses normally allow. So to get a magnification greater than one to one, it's uh, necessary to use extension tubes or rings or teleconverters. Of course, uh, there are also macro lenses that allow magnification for up to five to one reproduction. Uh, this is uh, for more extreme macro photography that is considered from five or to 10 to one and further 
so but if we go further we go then in the area of microscopic um, magnifications and photography so this is a bit um, more um, uh, niche uh, um, field of macro so today we will talk about uh, this normal macro and a bit extreme macro um, um, so now um, we need to think uh, in advance what we want to photograph and what uh, equipment we will need to uh, use. Uh, experimenting with higher or lower magnification is always welcome and is very useful for those uh, who are just starting with macro photography. So what we can take uh, with macro photography? Uh, usually these are small objects that can naked eye uh, can cannot see or uh, it can hardly see. So any item inside or outside the house. Uh, of course, there is uh, a living or a still life like uh, plants, insects, birds, food, body parts, and and so on. Because uh, uh, actually, a lot of inspiration can be found everywhere. For example, uh, it is best to start uh, photographing so-called unavoidable cliches. And these are um, all common objects. That is an uh, object or subject that we find in our home or around the home on, on the yard or somewhere. So uh, here are some examples that uh, can be interesting at first. Uh, if nothing else, it can at least uh, technically mastery uh, of framing uh, and uh, experimenting with light and uh, depth of field and so on. So. I will show you now uh, some sam examples that um, you can sh shoot anytime uh, you want because basically you all have it uh, at home. So these are flowers. As you can see, um, these were shot uh, with normal macro lens. In this uh, sample, it was used the Sigma 180 mm. And this is more extreme macro, just detail of a flower. Uh, shot with uh, LAOVA 25 millimeter. I will talk uh, about the equipment a bit later. But for now, you will see um, this, uh, the fruit also, it's kiwi. Um, the eye, eyes, human eyes, or um, uh, computer parts like electronics and uh, playing with uh, drops uh, of water inside the house and um, here you can see uh, the uh, watch parts and the bubbles um, textures so you can uh, take photograph of the uh, wood and the uh, paint and the, the, the wood again the frost in the winter uh, shells or stones so many uh many uh different um uh, items you can shoot uh, whatever you find uh, near yourself and can uh, look um, quite interesting when you uh, get this uh, detailed macro photo this is uh, the rust and so let's uh, talk about uh, equipment uh, that I uh, use or I have used before from my beginning. So, uh, as you can see, uh, I started with digital SLRs. It was uh, from Sony uh, A700 to newer models. Now there are mirrorless, of course. Uh, the latest I use is uh, A7R Mark IV uh, with uh, 60 megapixel. It, gives excellent uh, picture quality and uh, lenses that uh, are mostly the Sigma 180 millimeter Sony 90 millimeter macro, uh, LAOVA uh, that goes to five to one magnification is 25 millimeter and also wide angle macro. I also use a uh, trioplan that is an uh, uncommon lens. It's actually a portrait lens, but it creates uh, one wonderful bokeh effect that you, I will show you um, later and uh, but also you can use uh, even tele lenses uh, especially if you 
want to try to shoot uh, insects in flight or something like that. And there is also a uh, use of um, uh, teleconverters and extension tubes, which uh, gives me um, much uh, bigger magnification. Of course, there is a tripod, electronic rails, and uh, reflectors that uh, are really necessary, and you basically cannot do macro without these uh, accessories. And so, these are the most common lenses that uh, you will find uh, that goes uh, to true one-to-one -one, uh, magnification ratio with different focal length. So we have here Tamron 60 millimeter from uh, Sony, there is 19 millimeter. Then uh, we have uh, other lenses uh, ranging in 100, 105 uh, and till 180 millimeter. So uh, I did try uh, use uh, the close up ring filters, but uh, I found them um, not that helpful because uh, they are only sharp in the center of the image while the edges are more blurred, so I try to avoid them. Uh, but uh, extension rings or extension tubes is a very good addition to achieve uh, magnification greater than one to one. And um, they are giving me um, uh, approximately a magnification of uh, three to one mag uh, magnification. And this is very uh, good investment and it's quite cheap. So my, recom my recommendations goes to this one. Uh, the teleconverters are good nowadays. They were not that good in the past, but uh, if you use uh, dedicated uh, teleconverters, you will get uh, a good picture quality without uh, many losses. Of course, you will lose uh, some, um, uh, some of the light, but uh, uh, the picture quality will remain very good. And the uh, tripod uh, is uh, really need to have a accessory without tripod, you actually cannot uh, do serious macro work. And this is uh, here uh, is an example of mounted uh, extension rings with uh, teleconverter and macro lens. It's a bit old system that I was using before, but you can get the pictures how it look like. So um, this is much more modernized system. As you can see, there is a macro lens mounted on the electronic rails and the latest uh, Sony uh, R7R Mark IV. Uh, so this is some um, standard equipment that I use for macro photography, but uh, I have to mention also, so this is the electronic rail that uh, I use. It's, uh, you can precisely uh, adjust the, the um, movement and for each shot it will, it will take shot and then uh, continue to um, uh, move and take shot and so on and so you can program program this um, uh, good uh, aid uh, for um, uh, focus stacking which I will explain uh, a bit later. So now um, these are uh, atypical lenses in macro photography that can give uh, some very interesting uh, result and uh, this is a uh, allow a 15 millimeter uh, macro lens which is wide angle and it can um, uh, focus from um, around one or two centimeter from top of the lens it's a very interesting lens to shoot because now you see this uh, example is when two butterflies were shot with 180 millimeter which is tele lens tele macro and uh, on the the same scene uh, was shot with uh, 15 millimeter uh, wide macro. So they can completely give completely a different look and uh, perspective, uh, as you see. Uh, this is also one interesting shot with a wide angle macro. And now uh, pay attention to this. This is uh, these two butterflies were shot with this uh, wide angle and uh, the next uh, picture is shot the 180 millimeter macro. So you get the, uh, the idea how 
different lenses can uh, change completely uh, the, the perspective and uh, the look of the final image. Uh, and this is um, actually the, the same scene. It was shot in different, uh, maybe difference of five minutes. So when I mounted the um, different lenses and so. Um, and there is also one quite interesting lens that is uh, uh, quite old. It's uh, made maybe 60, uh, actually 70 uh, years ago, uh, but it, um, with its optics, it creates this uh, soap bubble bokeh and um, a very, very interesting uh, lens uh, to use. Uh, it only makes this effect at full, uh, fully open aperture at uh, 2.8, and uh, but it creates one wonderful bokeh. Everything that uh, in the background shines, it creates these highlights with these circles, which are very lovely to to see. So this is uh, these are samples of the of um, made with this lens. And this is the one pictures you can get only once in a lifetime. So um, the equipment uh, that I use uh, and useful accessories uh, that should be taken with you uh, when you're going to work uh, in the field. So definitely rubber boots are something that we need to protect ourselves from dew and water because in the morning, obviously there will be uh, wet grass, so you don't uh, want to be uh, wet. Uh, small chair is very uh, useful because uh, you want to be comfortable when uh, working uh, from below. And um, tent or something to store your uh, photo bags or something like that and uh, to preserve uh, from water or maybe, I don't know, something came up. So. A dust blower and these uh, electronic rails, but also uh, markers and um, uh, also these uh, little uh, light uh, reflectors are very useful uh, because I quite uh, a lot to use in the uh, uh, shoot in the backlight. So where uh, I find the motives, uh, as you can see, uh, obviously. Um, these are meadows, uh, forests, ponds, lakes uh, that we can find a lot of uh, uh, insects uh, and uh, uh, living uh, beings. So, so as I um, mentioned photographing uh, living beings from nature, uh, I want to emphasize that uh, all photos of insects, uh, which um, I show you here, uh, either or uh, on social uh, networks, uh, exhibitions, uh, or other me media are uh, taken in nature and uh, with certain code of ethics that I carry uh, inside my being and adhere to from the very beginning. So uh, we need to treat all living beings with great respect and when photographing them, uh, I do not uh, subject them to any form of harassment or torture, as is unfortunately the practice with some characters. I will not intentionally tell photographer because the, to be nature photographer, uh, then uh, we have to follow the basic rule and that any form of manipulation that may harm or injure the subject must not be obtained to, for a photograph. Only true law for nature and uh, such attitude towards uh, the nature uh, can uh, yield uh, such photographs. So everything uh, else is just self-deception. Um, uh, I am not interested in studio photography or of dead insects and I do not present any interest of challenge uh, for me. So therefore uh, I actually never practice this. So. Um, this has to be uh, respected and um, um, no harm has to be ever done to uh, insect in order to get uh, photographed. Um, now, this is a, um, an example where we have um, doing uh, the workshop of macro and uh, 
I would like to uh, give an accent to uh, how to uh, get the most of the uh, macro photograph. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, most uh, more experienced uh, photographer of nature um, uh, have to uh, follow the forecast because uh, um, it's very important to to uh, um, to, um, uh, to know what expect next day uh, on the uh, forecast, what temperature will be and the wind or something, because um, it's very important uh, to, to know to plan your shooting. So now you see uh, the dragonfly on my arm uh, was uh, 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 flying, and you can see him even on my head. It was actually. Uh, a very uh, warm, uh, sorry, very warm day, and uh, uh, you can find them uh, around the uh, lakes and uh, meadows uh, or anywhere around water. Um, so, this is uh, some uh, little uh, pond uh, where dragonfly usually uh, begin to emerge and. Uh, uh, if you take a more close uh, look at the plants and uh, twings along the water, you can come across the, uh, the exoskeleton, exoskeletons of uh, dragonflies uh, that uh, already done uh, the metamorphosis, as you can see here. And uh, these are um, uh, the... Um, uh, scenes where the dragonfly uh, emerges uh, out of the this uh, nympha uh, stage and go out uh, to 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 become the adult, and uh, you see the the wonderful um, metamorphosis of the dragonfly here. Uh, there is also one uh, a sample how they uh, go out. This is a smaller damselfly. And uh, uh, now we have a butterfly. Um, butterfly are most often found on top of the flower or grass. And these are some uh, just samples how uh, you will much much easily find uh, them uh, in the nature. So um, I found this one in the uh, top of the grass and. It was shot with uh, phone, and the next photo is that I made uh, with uh, camera and uh, macro lens. So there is uh, quite a bit of difference when shooting uh, with uh, uh, true equipment for macro. Now uh, going for shooting, uh, as I mentioned before, um, the weather forecast is very important. Um, and you have to uh, watch this uh, at least one day in advance um, uh, because of two uh, significant, significant uh, factors that can influence uh, your um, maybe possibly successful photo or not. So um, uh, this is the air temperature and the wind because with lower air temperature uh, in the spring and summer days, uh, the, uh, it can be in early morning uh, quite fresh. So lower temperature is uh, putting uh, insect in sleep mode, like hibernation, and the uh, activity is reduced to minimum. So they will only uh, make a slight move here and there, maybe perhaps uh, weeping tiny uh, drops or of dew from their eyes, and uh, will not. Uh, take off uh, or uh, when they do not reach uh, the operating temperature, let's say. So such situations are actually very welcome uh, for a macro photographer. Um, because uh, when you have uh, the low temperature, you will uh, successfully shoot the living insect because he's actually sleeping. And um, then the wind, if uh, there is a wind, there will be very difficult to make uh, any uh, good photo. With wind, uh, it will be your enemy every 
time. And um, there will be a, a situation, in fact, that just everyone will face it uh, when try to shoot macro. And because, because of all this, you have to be very patient and persistent uh, because this is the most info, important factors when shooting macro. Uh, good weather uh, when it's uh, still, so no wind and uh, quite low temperature and you will for sure get a good photograph. So now uh, as we go uh, on the uh, middle, um, uh, it often happens that we don't find just one insect or uh, we, we could find several insects and now we go maybe uh, 15 or 20 meters away and we cannot any longer uh, remember where we saw uh, the insect. So what to do now? So then I take um, these uh, markers uh, like uh, improvisational flags or something to um, stick them in the place where uh, I found the uh, interesting uh, motif. And uh, then you have uh, uh, opportunity to choose uh, between uh, maybe uh, one or more um, uh, subjects that you will shoot. So um, as we are in the field in early morning, light is a very important factor. Actually, it's the most important factor factor because uh, first uh, rays of sun that appear on the horizon are always uh, the most beautiful and they are milled and has uh, is, they are the best for the photo it can give uh, more drama or uh, uh, when uh, i uh, work uh, in the backlight so now i will show you some samples how this can uh, look really really nice so this is a swallowtail butterfly and a pair of dragonflies that are resting in the morning. And using this backlight uh, can give you really a nice, nice uh, effect. So then I often use uh, uh, the small uh, light reflectors that I was uh, mentioning before. And uh, you don't even have to use a uh, flash uh, or uh, external flash uh, unit uh, because uh, with excellent dynamic range of uh, Sony sensors, I can extract detail from dark parts without showing uh, noise. So some samples more to enjoy. Dragonflies, butterflies, these are the most common uh, subject that I shoot. So now, um, let me show you the sample, how uh, background can actually change quite quickly in, uh, in the color. Uh, now, these butterflies, the very same, just a little bit uh, um, angle that is different here. And you can see um, uh, uh, how, light can change and now the sun came up and everything uh, uh, goes in the uh, golden tone but it's the very same butterflies at the very same place and you can get uh, very different pictures and uh, here is also one example to show you the background because the background is very important as the subject as well as you see the color can change dramatically and even a slight change in the angle that you position your camera and lens can lead uh, to very different result. Uh, so now uh, I will um, show you how I can uh, improve a uh, background, a uh, better background. Uh, so I have used uh, at first the metal bar and later came out with the idea uh, of telescopic magnet that can be adjusted in height and around the axis. So I fastened this to a metal base and then uh, I, I fixed the plant uh, of a butterfly that is found on a, on a stem or some um, flower. So now as I uh, 
put a butterfly together uh, with the stem uh, and then I um, uh, uh, fix uh, this on this uh, magnetic uh, telescope. So now I reduced the effect of wind because uh, the stem won't uh, move uh, uh, too much. And uh, as you can see, this is uh, the final result. And uh, so I did not disturb the insect. Everything was on its plate as it was. And uh, I managed to get a much better background because it, he was uh, too low. So I couldn't reach uh, with uh, my uh, camera and uh, lens. So I just place it a little bit higher. And then I can rotate uh, uh, myself around uh, uh, the subjects. And uh, this way I can get a much, much uh, better uh, background. So it's quite useful uh, trick to do. Um, and this is a crop of the image. Now, um, um, I would like to mention that uh, with um, focus uh, picking and uh, focus magnifier, I can get uh, a lot uh, more uh, comfortable control and uh, larger and accurate display when I use uh, Sony Xperia. Uh, phone, which can, uh, uh, with its uh, 4K uh, display, give me much more um, uh, sharper and uh, more perfectly focused uh, place on the subject. Um, so I can even remotely uh, control the camera with uh, this. So it's a good addition for uh, to have a bigger screen in uh, shooting macro. And also, I can uh, transfer files just uh, immediately after I take the shot to share along uh, with the community and so on. And now, uh, there are also uh, some samples of my macro works. Uh, these are dragonflies and butterflies when uh, uh, mating. You can even see one mosquito that landed on the wings which is uh, um, quite interesting. And you will often find uh, very interesting uh, motives and situations in the nature. That once you start to, uh, to search in the nature and take a look for uh, macro photographs. Stag beetle and damselflies playing around. And the dragonfly from above. So a small dragonfly and a little damsel fly hiding and a butterfly and two butterflies. Uh, so now uh, we have all of this uh, problem in the macro photography with the depth of field. So this is the, the part of uh, the image that is sharp and in focus. Uh, Everything else in the background will be uh, very much blurred and will not be sharp. So uh, no matter how much you close aperture, um, you cannot get every, uh, everything in depth of field. So this is the most common problem in the macro. And uh, there is never enough uh, depth of field in the macro photography. So then we use uh, focus stacking uh, technique uh, like uh, merging uh, multiple focus uh, or exposures, as you like, uh, to get the required uh, depth of field. Now, uh, you see here is the example of a uh, uh, stacked image, maybe 200 of them, and uh, how the, the final look can be dramatically improved that when you have uh, all in the depth of field. So now you see this is a, uh, animated GIF that uh, shows how uh, camera moves and the, the focus will uh, and depth of field changes. So we need uh, to take um, a couple of, uh, and then the final image when it's stacked together. Now this is a damselfly, a dragonfly portrait, sorry. And, uh, and the final result is this. 
so by moving uh, the focus from the nearest uh, point, we will cover the desired area uh, of depth of field. Each shift requires the shooting of uh, one photo. So this is best done with using uh, focusing rails, especially if you have electronically controlled ones, that, that will be the best. So uh, you will uh, uh, get uh, the time lag between each exposure and the uh, number of shots and the speed of movement uh, a lot faster than if you uh, do it uh, manually with uh, focusing ring on the lens. So now we have a photo uh, focus on the first, on the nearest point from the lens, and we uh, select then focus further, and you can see how now the uh, the first part, the nearest point, is uh, start to become uh, blurred or out of focus, and uh, other parts are uh, that as I go further are getting sharp. So now, once we covered all uh, the shots uh, with uh, the, uh, the, the many exposures, then we stack the image and the final image looks like this. It's uh, much, much better uh, looking than only have only slight, uh, tiny, uh, little in focus. Uh, I will show you now how uh, to do that in uh, Photoshop. So. We go um, to file and uh, script and uh, load file into stack. So then uh, we choose to browse the images that we will uh, use after we, of course, uh, did the conversion from a raw file and uh, so on. Uh, and then uh, we uh, select all these uh, images and uh, then go back uh, to edit and uh, how to align uh, layers. Uh, after the operation is done, then we go back to edit and then uh, how to blend layers. After that, uh, it will uh, we press OK. And uh, once this is finished, uh, we go to flatten image. And that's it. So, um, so in order to make a successful uh, stack, uh, it will often make uh, you require to make you maybe five or six set of uh, uh, to to have at least one good that will be uh, uh, fine for a later uh, processing. So when I'm done shooting, I start uh, processing raw files where I adjust all the parameters uh, 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 to convert them to TIFF, and then uh, after I use a TIFF file TIFF files to uh, in the Photoshop uh, or in a Zeren stacker, which is one specialized uh, uh, software uh, for merging these uh, photographs uh, in macro. So it uh, requires fairly uh, powerful computer and uh, it can take a bit of time, maybe sometimes a couple of hours to finish all this because uh, sometimes I can even shoot to 500 images, but uh, yeah, I did it only a couple of months. In average, there is uh, around 150 to 200 uh, photos per stack. So, uh, but uh, you see, uh, sometimes is uh, you want the exactly the opposite uh, situation to shoot uh, some close-up of um, insect with fully open aperture, um, which will give you a, a background completely blurred but the uh, main subject will uh, remain uh, uh, sharp. So now these are some samples that I make uh, with uh, open aperture uh, to, to, to pronounce more uh, blurred background as these are more uh, a bit uh, white uh, um, shots. So now we go to part of extreme macro. Um, for this, uh, uh, I use uh, equipment, as you see, uh, the most often is use uh, this Lava 25 millimeter that goes from uh, two and a half to five uh, to one reproduction ratio. 
and uh, then I can combine uh, Sony 90 millimeter or Sigma 180 uh, with uh, extension tubes or uh, telecoverters. And of course, there are uh, these extension tubes, tripod and electronic rails. And this is the lens that I just mentioned. So, and sample how uh, flower can look like. Uh, very detailed and uh, the horse fly and uh, horse fly from the uh, side and as you can see this is very very large magnification i have used here uh, the teleconverter with uh, two uh, time so and and a bit of uh, extension tubes and that uh, gives me a reproduction of 12 to 1 so it's a very very large modification and therefore i have to use a very very small steps like maybe 10 micrometer in the for each shot while doing focus stacking now i show you an example of, of a dragonfly portrait and they are beautiful compound eyes uh, because when zoomed in, you can see many, many of these uh, tiny uh, eyes uh, that are really impressive to watch and see. And uh, if you are lucky, you will find uh, them covered with uh, dew in early morning. And this is more close uh, uh, around, I think it was uh, around maybe seven to one. Uh, this is one uh, five to one reproduction ratio of damsel five portrait and now the series of them. So you can see even in the reflection of these uh, little uh, water drops in the world. And uh, you can combine this all uh, with um, different um, colors. Of course, you can combine uh, background to put something uh, in the behind them, but most uh, usually I don't use any, um, uh, how to say, um, uh, man made uh, um, things, but um, I often use just a flower or a plant that give you a more natural color. So, and in this. Uh, Example, I have been using my hiding tent for birds, which is uh, uh, in a brown uh, tone, but uh, can give you when uh, having this uh, oh, a special lightning uh, interesting results. So, experimenting is always uh, welcome when doing macro. And uh, now we have so, in the Amazon Fly portrait, and from the side. These are very detailed image. It's a 10 to 1 magnification ratio. And this is one of the first shots that I made last year with the new Sony 7R Mark IV. And there, this is a making of picture of this uh, hoverfly. And the final image is looking like this. I think it took uh, quite a lot of uh, shots, I think uh, over 200 to get everything in depth. So uh, it was um, uh, very, it has to be very still. And as you can see this butterfly here on the flower and the portrait of him. So now we have a damselfly and the final image was looking like this very beautiful because uh, he was uh, standing still after uh, he was uh, cleaning his eyes i even have a video of this when uh, doing this uh, cleaning of themselves and preparing to fly so when doing macro you actually don't have too much time uh, because uh, once they start to move uh, they will soon uh, take off so you have to uh, be very quick uh, but also very careful not to disturb because every move can uh, 
uh, make them uh, scare and they will fly or something away. So here are samples of damselflies again. My most common uh, uh, subject that I take photos. And here is a rubber fly. Uh, many of these photos were already uh, awarded in uh, photography competitions. And this one is uh, made with uh, normal macro lens with uh, Sigma 180, but combined with the extension tubes and teleconverter. So you can see how much uh, we can gain with uh, this combination. And uh, here are an example of the details of the dragonfly wings, which are beautiful in color. And details are just amazing. So this is a, a dragonfly wing. And you can make many, many compositions uh, just when taking a photograph of just one part of uh, uh, the insect. And this can be very, very nice and artistic uh, way to express in photograph. Uh, also, one older lens that was using at the beginning is a Smitacon lens. Uh, and the spiders can look somewhat scary to somebody. <laughs> I hope I, they will not be scared too much. And uh, this is a 15 to 1 macro that is, I think, the pitches that I achieved uh, so far combining the, the extension tubes and uh, um, teleconverter. And now uh, these are scales of a butterfly wing. They can look very interesting and amazing, very col colorful. And I'm sure everyone who wants to improve their skills or just start in macro that will be uh, interested in uh, showing uh, uh, these photos. So, because you will discover a completely new world and uh, you will discover in nature how uh, they, uh, you will learn a lot of things in uh, shooting uh, nature, especially macro or birds or something, which is uh, uh, that I encourage you. And uh, I'm sure you will enjoy it. So now you see this uh, butterfly and um, the uh, part of this wing here is uh, here, magnified to uh, five to one magnification. So you get the idea how much uh, is, uh, now if you take a look um, into middle of the butterfly uh, wing, and uh, now you see the details and scales on the butterfly wing. Also, this is head of butterfly and um, <clears throat> eyes any compound eyes. And this is a portrait of a bee while well, sleeping. And the, the aphid family on the leaf, you see bigger mama aphid and little ones. So it's a whole family. And uh, uh, this is a dragonfly. One last picture that I will show you. Uh, for this uh, workshop, so that's uh, all from me, and uh, I hope uh, you have an uh, um, interesting uh, time with me, and thank you very much.